Hello everyone and welcome to This Week in Net. It's the March the 1st, 2024 edition. And this week we're going to include a Security Week teaser at the end. That's one of our Innovation Weeks that is coming up next week. I'm Jean Dumais, coming to you from sunny Lisbon, Portugal. But we start talking about developers building on our developers platform, Workers. Our Discord server reached 40,000 users, so we'll discuss that with Veronica in Porto, Portugal. And then we will go to Calgary, Canada, to get an update on models for developers using Workers AI hopefully build some AI magic. So first thing is first, hello, Veronica, and welcome to This Week in Net. Where does the show find you? Hey, Joan, thank you for inviting me. I'm currently in Porto, but I'm from Venezuela. And yeah, I've, li I've been living here for four years now, and I've been working at Cloudflare for more than a year. And previously, I was a product manager, also software engineer, dancer, singer, a lot of things before joining Cloudflare. So uh, Porto in Portugal, That's just for yeah, those who don't in know, Porto. <laughs> uh, in Portugal. I'm in Lisbon, so we're in the same country, but not in the same city. Um, but um, but it, it's good to have you here, specifically. Um, and we're here to celebrate a uh, an achievement, uh, our Discord channel, our Cloudflare developers Discord uh, server uh, reached 40,000 um, uh, users, right? Yeah, we currently have a little bit more than that, probably 42,000. Um, we used to have 20K when I joined one year ago, so we grew a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a lot, yeah. yeah. Even the, the <laughs> developers that use Workers, our developers platform, uh, has uh, that has also been increasing. I think we're over one million now of developers that were that use Workers to build stuff, uh, specifically, right? Yeah, we have a lot of developers. They usually use more pages and workers. Those are like the most popular products, but we have more and we now have AI products, which is great. We've been doing also AI hackathons in many countries and cities. And, and yeah, there are many developers using and starting to know the new products that we have. Exactly, and actually, in this show, we've been discussing new LLMs, uh, models that have been uh, put available in our workers' AI, so uh, developers can build uh, with different LLMs, different uh, models there too, right? Yeah, and we've recently added eight new models in the available models list, so that's great because people have been requesting a lot. Um, actually, one of the most requested things is to be able to use custom models. Uh, and that's not yet possible, but we've been adding more models to, to the list. And there's news on the developers front in the next few weeks uh, for, for those who want to be interested there. For those who don't know, our Discord server, uh, specifically for Cloudflare, um, developers, uh, for what is, is that used specifically? Who are the developers there, and what do how they do they they use the server specifically? Well, yes, most of them are developers, but some of them are not. Probably they are beginners or CEOs or yeah, just company owners and people that have uh, the need technical products for their company. But yeah, most of them are developers independent ones or already working for some company and they are back-end, front-end, full stack, probably mostly full, full stack as well. And <laughs> what type of questions are answered there specifically? Uh, a lot of different questions depending on the other product too, right? Yeah, they ask a lot of questions. Mm, sometimes it could be issues or they provide feedback, but the questions could be uh, for example, one of the most asked are why a call for pages doesn't have a Wrangler Tomel, and also the custom models one. <laughs> when are you going to support custom models for uh, workers AI? That's going to be soon. And, and yeah, also issues. It's a great way to detect issues because people are always like reporting issues and also sharing feedback. And also it's a great place for people to show what they're building. They always share. We have a channel called What I Built and they usually share the, their cool projects there. 
so that more people can see it and they can get inspired with that. So developers not only showing what they're building, also help others um, build using uh, our platform. So it's like a guideline. Hey, here, here's how, how I did this. You can use the work I did to build your own stuff too, right? It's a uh, collaborative, collaborative effort there too, right? Yeah, we have many, many community projects that could be used as templates for people to learn how to use the product. They can use our templates like the Cloudflare official ones, but there are many projects uh, made by the community, um, sometimes made by our community champions, which are like the power users and also moderators of our Discord server. And, and yeah, they usually start building with the products we launch even before it's launched so before i ask you to show how the the server works specifically um can you give us some highlights in terms of problems uh, or use cases that you saw that were solved that were dealt with in the server that you remember for example well a specific use cases there are many it's cool because we have betas, right? So we need beta testers and it's a great place to find them. For example, there's a beta right now uh, for browser rendering API and there's a wait list for that. You can find it like in the Cloudflare website, but you can get access more quickly on Discord and people are every day asking for it for work browsers rendering API and sharing their use cases. And I'm enabling for them all the time. And that also happens with other betas. And for example, community champions and the MVPs and the experts also participate in beta testing. And it's a great way for us to, to get feedback from people like really, really early in development. Uh, so now <laughs> let's, let's show people what we've been discussing how the Discord server Cloudflare developers wor uh, works. So I'm a, a new developer or someone really interested in this topic. Uh, how can I start specifically? You would usually go to discord.cloudflare.com and you can join our server. And after you follow all the steps, you're going to find this. And after reading the rules and everything, you can see we have the channels here, the server, general. We have channels for many products, but we focus more on the developer platform. So we're not gonna have, a, have all the products in the channels. In that case, you can ask your question in the general help channel, if it's about other product that doesn't have any channel. And we have three forums, which are, yeah, general help and pages help and workers help as well, because those are the most used ones. But we also have channels for other products like D1, KB, Qs, and other products that are not part of the developer Green. platforms. There's a lot there. Um, yeah, there are many channels. It's, there are many and many people that are willing to help. That's always a good. I, I've used the, specifically the the, chan, the the Discord server to ask questions to developers specifically uh, in the past. Uh, and it's you can feel that there's a community there of people trying to help each other, which is great. Um, and it's just searching the product you want goes a long way, like you were saying, but also those more general topics uh, will also work. If you really want some guidelines on wh where should I ask this specifically, that should also work. You also work in uh, regarding um, sponsorships, right? The open source software sponsorship program. How does that work specifically? Well, so usually uh, people would fill in a form that we have in, in the Cloudflare web website. And then I review the application. We have some requirements, like of course being open source, an open source project. And but also who can who can apply? Uh, who could be interested in this specifically? Any person that has an open source project and that is nonprofit and is using Cloudflare or not using Cloudflare, but needing some help with. Uh, the products, imagine that you need the CDN or need more features that are included in our pro plan because the, the main advantage of the, the program is that you get a free upgrade to the pro plan. So 
if any, any of the things that the, the plan offers, it will be great for your open source project. Uh, but yeah, it has to be a, a nonprofit project and it can be about anything. It doesn't have to be super technical project just for the developer community, but also we're now accepting projects about education or sports or anything else. It doesn't have to be 100% related to the developer community. In, in that situation, first, where when did the program start specifically, the sponsorship program? It started like three years ago or so. Mm -hmm. It's been here for a while, but we- There's a lot of participants at this point? Yeah, we're sponsoring probably more than 300 projects. We have many famous companies there actually. And yeah, they use Coffer a lot. We can sometimes adapt the program depending on the needs that the project has. But yeah, we have many, many, many projects to sponsor. And we get a lot of applications every day. So yeah, we can't accept all of them, but we try to, to review most of that and, and try to sponsor if we can. So if I have an open source project uh, that I want to apply, where should I go? So we have a blog post that we published last year in Developer Week, where we tell you more about the program and how it works and all the criteria and the benefits you can get. And if you go to Cloudflare sponsorships, you can see some of the projects we're currently sponsoring. And these are not all of them, just some of them, but we have many cool projects here. And if you want to apply for the program, you just have to fill in this form and then I'm going to be notified and I will review your application. And if it's approved, we can upgrade your plan to pro and depending on other things you need, we can also try to, to help you with other products depending on the availability, ability. And you will get notified via email if you if your project is accept, accepted. So you have to be a nonprofit. This project has to be a nonprofit specifically, yeah. but what could make the difference in terms of being approved or not? Depending on, for example, we don't accept personal projects. For example, mm. it's more like projects or like- Useful for the community in a sense, right? Yeah, not like, oh, I'm Veronica and I want to, uh, I want to sponsor for my personal project. Little project, um, yeah. Yeah, that is like promoting myself. Usually we don't do that. We mm. can do that, that sometimes, but we focus more on projects that help more people and like it's a, an organization or something bigger. It doesn't have to be super big, but something that is helping more in the community in general. Makes sense. So yeah, this yeah. was great. Learn a lot about our developers and our platform in a sense. Uh, do you want to share anything more, Veronica? Yeah, actually, I wanted to share that we recently created a new process for community champs to raise issues and incidents be from Discord. And it's uh, powered by a bot made by Ali Kromkan, one of our employees. And it's been great because it's letting us detect issues super quickly. For example, the incident that we had on November 2nd last year, that was a pretty big incident. And around 130 people reported issues on Discord and we were able to detect it uh, more quickly. And also, yeah, many incidents like that, many issues that uh, turn into incidents suddenly and affect Thousands of, of people are detected on Discord thanks to this process and our community champs as well. So they were picked up on right really quickly, so we can deal with those really quickly. So less people will be impacted in a sense, right? Yeah, we can detect it in, in minutes and super quickly because our community champs are always there almost 24-7 monitoring everything. So it let it, us... It helps having people all around the world, right? Different time zones, it helps. 
Yeah, we have in many different continents. So yeah, there's always someone there uh, monitoring everything. That, that's great. Great to hear. Uh, thank you so much. And see you next time. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. See you. Hi, my name is Logan Grasby. I am a developer educator for AI at Cloudflare, and I am based in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I have been working on helping the team add new models to the AI catalog uh, for Workers AI. And we recently wrote a blog post announcing the 17 new models that we've just added, and we have many more on the way. These models add a variety of new use cases for developers to be able to build tools that otherwise would have not been possible on Cloudflare's platform. You can do things now like from an image, get detailed descriptions of the contents of the image, the objects in the image. You can generate images and edit images using AI by combining multiple images together and a text prompt to get varying results. And you can do things that are much smaller uh, models, but much faster, things like summarization. And all of these are just really the tip of the iceberg in terms of what we are going to be rolling out. There's uh, going to be over 50 models on the catalog very soon. And so we're really excited to continue to add new use cases for developers building on Cloudflare. And now it's time for a Security Week teaser. Next week is our first Innovation Week of the year. Innovation Weeks are now a part of the Cloudflare tradition for some years. We usually do a handful of those, choosing specific topics every year. To help me with this, I have Anchor and Danielle. Hello, Anchor. Hello, Danielle. How are you? Hey, Joe. Uh, my name's uh, Anko Agarwal. I'm based out of San Francisco, um, product manager here at Cloudflare, working on our gateway product uh, for Zero Trust. And we're excited to kind of just give you a little bit of a, a look into what we're launching or talking about during Security Week. Uh, so for Security Week, we really wanted to get uh, the message out there about the um, products and features and really even uh, our messages about helping making the internet better. Um, so uh, we'll have a ton of blog posts and a ton to share. Uh, but for now, I'm going to turn it over to Daniele to kind of maybe walk through some of our focus topics. And hello, everybody. Thanks, Anchor. My name is Daniele. I'm the Group Product Manager for the WAF here at Cloudflare. And there are a couple of areas I wanted to talk about for Security Week. So one big area we're going to talk about is AI. So 2024 is probably going to be the year of AI, right? So Everybody's talking about that um, and the promise of AI to evolutionize uh, how we work and generate content is, is out there. Uh, but also with AI, with the advent of AI, it means that we get new threats, new attack vectors, and basically new, um, if you want, uh, uh, scenarios that we weren't prepared to face. So because of this change, we are investing a lot in new products and features, both leveraging AI, but also protecting AI. So if you're interested in the topic, early in the week, we are going to launch um, some protection, I could say, for LLMs and AIs. So more about how do we secure AI um, uh, models um, uh, on either deployed on, on Cloudflare or, or uh, anywhere. Uh, but also we are launching features that we where we use AI to power uh, um, the way you interact with the Cloudflare dashboard or in general with, with our security products. So if you're interested, stay tuned and of course look out for, for those AI stories. Hmm. Well, our security our security week, any innovation week that we have, usually there's a lot of blog posts in each day uh, from Monday to Friday. What types of topics will be like mixed together in terms of, of the week, Anchor? So we're going to have a lot of topics mixed together uh, for uh, application security, uh, as well as SASE and uh, 
um, basically are helping making the internet better. So uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Daniele to walk us through some of the uh, application security pieces. Yes, thanks. And then, uh, as you mentioned, Anchor, we're going to intertwine, if you want, blogs and stories of different areas. So it's going to be AI, but also application security, right? So application security includes all our WAF, DDoS, client-side security, or API gateway, API shield products. And we have um, new features for each one of those of those areas. So specifically, for example, for page shield, um, if you are a customer concerned with GDPR, issues with tracking GDPRs, then uh, definitely look out for a page shield blog post. We have also uh, a big announcement around analytics and especially how we're going to enable customers to uh, interact with our uh, logs and data uh, and have more insights into the data, more granular insights on, on, uh, on the logs. Uh, and also this will, this will help optimizing um, the cost of your IT uh, toolkit and infrastructure in general in, in span. And, and one more uh, feature I wanted to, to quickly touch upon is um, security uh, for APIs. So as part of API Gateway, we are expanding the capabilities of that solution. So if you're interested in managing authentication of API traffic uh, as part of your application and perhaps leverage Cloudflare to, to meet that use case, then uh, again, this is something for you this week. A lot to discuss. Um, there's different potential customers that could be uh, served with the different topics that are discussed this week. Uh, what types of uh, customers, of engineers, that people work in this area, security area, should be more aware of what we're launching, Anchor? Yeah, uh, I can definitely take that. So the um, uh, on the kind of SASE and uh, SASE side of things, uh, this is like squarely focused at uh, practitioners, how it can improve their lives, but then it's also uh, impactful for CISOs and security uh, leaders, because these are definitely security changes or uh, updates that really just make their lives easier. Uh, something we like to say internally often is just what makes you sleep better at night. <laughs> like what gets you, uh, you know, helps you stop worrying about that, uh, you know, latest security uh, vulnerability. So uh, on the SASE side of things, we've actually focused in a lot on a few different things. Um, we'll have deep dives on kind of our email security. Uh, basically, it helps uh, enterprises secure their users' inboxes uh, from messages they receive via either spam or phishing. Uh, and then we'll also have another one related to DLP. Uh, this will help uh, really identify or flag or even filter uh, possible loss of trade secrets. So things like uh, source codes uh, being uploaded to repositories that you don't own. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we'll have a deep dive on really just uh, deploying zero trust. So that TLS inspection piece and uh, securing uh, Cloudflare with Cloudflare. So it's a good story that we've talked about before, but we wanted to do a deeper dive into just what it means privacy-wise of uh, deploying something like zero trust at Cloudflare. Um, and so uh, we believe the collection of these stories combining with um, the, the kind of last piece here, which is just networks that are easier to connect are also easier to secure. Uh, will help kind of just build that whole story together and really make the lives of those network uh, practitioners, security practitioners, and those uh, CC level people uh, just a lot easier. Makes sense. So a lot of trends, features, uh, products, enhancements in terms of security uh, announced uh, for, for next week uh, specifically. So a lot to uncover. Do we miss something that you want to highlight? Yeah, the, the one piece I just wanted to cover was the kind of efforts that we're doing for the help make the internet better uh, aspect. So a few of those are uh, next week is actually going to be Super Tuesday here in the US. Uh, so it's a big election day and we're going to have a deep dive into internet traffic trends we see during that day, as well as touching on our Project Galileo efforts, uh, which is kind of free Cloudflare services for uh, political campaigns. Um, to protect and uh, secure kind of 
free and open elections, uh, as well as uh, just an update on our famous lava lamps. Uh, so it'll be an update on uh, their, their use and how we use them to generate randomness and uh, really generate and protect uh, Cloudflare. Those are two products that I take close to heart, Project Galileo, uh, and also the our level lamps perspective, randomness perspective. Uh, so updates there are great. Project Galileo is it's more general, but we also have like helping elections specifically. Um, but it, it helps thousands of of internet properties uh, be be online in a sense uh, free, which is great. Um, anything, Danielle, from your side? I'm just very excited to uh, to be able to launch a few products and uh, and yeah, be able to share all the uh, interesting things we we've been working on in the last few months. So yeah, looking forward to that. Exactly, this is the culmination of work of several teams, uh, a lot of people at Cloudflare, different perspectives. Uh, it's about security, but it it takes a village because it takes different teams of, of the company, um, and it's really interesting that we're showing how we ourselves use our security products to be safe. So that's also interesting to, to take a look next week. And that's a wrap. Thank you for your teaser for Security Week. Thank you. Stay tuned. Before we go, let's get an update on our blog. The first one is Polyfill.io is now available on CDN.js to reduce the risk of supply chain attacks. So you can replace your Polyfill.io links today for a seamless experience. For those who don't know, Polyfill.io is a service that provides code to make sure web features work in older browsers. And it's now hosted on CDN.js. Moving on, also this week, we wrote a blog post about how Cloudflare recently fixed two critical DNSSEC vulnerabilities. Both of those can exhaust computational resources of validating DNS resolvers. So these vulnerabilities do not affect our authoritative DNS or DNS firewall products. We also uh, published a blog post mentioning that we're open sourcing Pingora, our Rust framework for building programmable network services. So you can read all about it in our blog. We also have this blog post that digs deeper into Cloudflare's approach to machine learning operations. It goes into monitoring and how we can continue to evaluate the models that power bot management. So see you next week for an All About Security Week episode with our CSO, Rand Borzikas. And also celebrating the return of John Stewart to The Daily Show in the US, here's your moment of zen with our DNS guru, Olafur Gudmundsen, in this clip from a long interview that you can check in our show notes. See you next week. Their internet is always under a threat. Because it's so important, right, in a sense. Yes, and the threats come from many different angles. There are the ones we can talk about. There are the ones who want to bring it down uh, or harm somebody who is on it. There is the governmental threats. Governments want to be totally able to dictate what uh, their captive audience sees. Hmm. There are businesses that want to rule it for their own benefit or to create uh, a closed ecosystem, uh, a, a, something like a America Offline version 2. Uh, yes. Uh, and uh, yes, so keeping the internet open, keeping the internet affordable is very important. And it is also important to realize it has to be affordable and available mm. to everybody. It doesn't matter if I have the internet, but nobody in Namibia has it. That's a bad mm. thing. It has to be available everywhere. There has to be sources on the internet that everybody can trust. Something like Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. um, uh. This information is getting very easy to do on the internet. Um, I'm not going to make any judgments about uh, the hype about AI systems today. Mm. Um, they can be good, they can be bad. Uh, but it, to some extent, I classify them as uh, you feed the garbage, it gets, you get garbage out. So the inputs have to be done right. 
Um, Makes sense. And this year we're 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 seeing that uh, in play already. Yes. Yes. So yes, uh, the future is bright and the future could be dark. Uh, it depends on what people vote for and uh, what uh, bad actors get away with. <laughs>